May the 11th is the 77th day since the beginning of the large-scale and bloody invasion of Russian troops into the territory of independent and sovereign Ukraine. On that day, the Kharkiv region was under attack. Occupying troops also fired at the recently liberated village of Tsirkuny. The sole purpose of the shelling was to set fire to the village where there are now 20 bedridden people, many children and only a few adults. The Russians fired 18 missiles at the city of Kamushevacha in Zaporizhia region. One person was killed and three were injured. 60 houses were damaged. The enemy also tried to hit the missile in one of the districts of Odessa region. No casualties were reported. Another cruise missile shot down over the Black Sea by Ukraine. Ukrainian air forces. Dnipropetrovsk region was shelled from Graz three times this day. In two settlements, there is destruction of buildings. Russian militants tortured civilians taken hostage. The occupiers published a video of the interrogation of Serhii Muros, a resident of Oleshkiv in Kherson region, who was abducted. He is speaking with tears in his eyes and bleeding. One can see the electric wires connected to the head. This video is another proof of the war crimes of the Russian Federation. After all, tortures and killing civilians by the Russian militants is a war crime under the Article 8 of the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. Commissioner for Human Rights of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine, Lyudmila Denisova. While the Russians are committing inhumane crimes against the Ukrainian civilian population, their relatives are calling for their torture even for children. The security service of Ukraine has intercepted a shocking telephone conversation between a Russian soldier and his wife in Russia. This woman lives in a city on the border with Ukraine where Ukrainians are being forcibly evacuated. She was outraged that the children refused to draw symbols for the Victory Day celebrations. Therefore, she suggested to punish them with inhumane torture. Russia is preparing to illegally join the Kherson region to its territory. Kherson region is the part of Ukraine which is now temporarily occupied. This territory borders the annexed Crimea in the south of Ukraine. The Russians have abandoned the pseudo-referendum scenario and are going to turn to Putin. The residents of Kherson are resisting the occupiers and constantly go to rallies, even despite the threat of shelling. The only appeal that can be prepared by the gaulators of the Kherson region is a request for pardon after the court verdict. The occupiers can ask for joining Mars or Jupiter like that as well. This is how Mikhailo Podolak, the advisor to the head of the president's office, reacted to the occupier's statements. Earlier, the president Volodymyr Zelensky stated that if a pseudo-referendum is held in Kherson, Ukraine will withdraw from the negotiation process. More than 10,000 people could die from disease and famine in Mariupol. The city was destroyed and blocked by the Russian army and remains the hottest spot in the Donetsk region. The occupiers turned Mariupol into a medieval ghetto. Accordingly, there will be a high level of mortality. Without medicine and medical care, restoration of water supply and sewerage system in the city, epidemics will break out. 10,000 people, such a figure, could become a terrible reality by the end of the year. Vadim Boychenko, the mayor of Mariupol. Now, according to the mayor Vadim Boychenko, at least 100,000 people are waiting for a chance to be rescued and evacuated to Ukraine. About a thousand of Ukrainian fighters may be on the territory of Azovstal plant. Half of them are seriously injured. Ukraine has offered to exchange them for Russian war prisoners, but no agreement has been reached yet, Deputy Prime Minister Irina Verushchuk said. It is currently impossible to unblock Mariupol by military means, and the Russians do not agree to the extraction procedure and storm the Ukrainian fortress from the air, land and sea. The commander of the Marines defending Mariupol, Serhii Volina, even addressed the inventor and billionaire Elon Musk. The military believes that the evacuation of Azovstal requires the help of a superman. 
The wives of the two defenders of Mariupol went to Vatican to ask the Pope for help. Their children, wives and mothers are begging to evacuate the fighters from Azovstal plant. The boy's parents and his uncle were killed right in front of 10 years old Andri. On March the 1st, they fled the village of Sofivka in the Chernihiv region. On the way, they came across a column of Russian military equipment. One of the armored personnel carriers deliberately started to hit the car. Russian soldiers pulled Andrei out of the crushed car, threw him in the sidelines and killed his parents in front of him. Fragments of human bones can still be seen under the wreckage of car parts. The boy was later noticed by the people from the village and called his grandparents. Andrei has an older sister, Tetyana. She is 26 and now she is his guardian. During the war, Russians committed more than 10,000 war crimes in Ukraine. The prosecutor's general's office of Ukraine is documenting them to bring the perpetrators to justice. свои действия на Украине, мы их презентовали предельно конкретно. Мы не хотим милитаризации Украины, мы не хотим сохранения тенденции к построению на Украине неонацистского государства. Когда эти боевики тренируются для осуществления террористических, по сути дела, действий, мы хотим, чтобы Украина была нейтральной. Фейками полнится эфир, вообще интернет и средства массовой информации в целом. Мы такого рода вещами не занимаемся. Это идет бой не на жизнь, а на смерть. За право России быть на политической карте мира при полном уважении своих законных интересов. Никто не собирался договариваться о прекращении огня. Где нацификация Украины необходима, и с этим медлить нельзя. Мы никогда не хотели войны, и до сих пор войны не хотим. Мы хотим эту войну закончить.